Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. This is the second part of our story about Fuzzy and the Stratford Academy. Fuzzy has spent his first day surrounded by whispers and murmurs from the other students, and it didn't make him feel very comfortable. When he went to the art room and created his first painting with the other students watching, things started to change for Fuzzy. The Stratford Academy for Cats and Dogs, Part 2. The day started early for Fuzzy, earlier than most of the other students at Stratford, because he lived just outside of Kensington and needed to take a bus for almost an hour to get to school on time. While he preferred to spend his mornings outside helping his father around the farm, riding the bus gave him the opportunity to see parts of the countryside he didn't often get to see. And he could put on his headphones and listen to some of his favorite music. He was so fixated on listening to music, he almost forgot where he was going until he saw the buildings of the city and, in the distance, the red brick spires of the academy. Seeing the academy brought on mixed feelings of dread and excitement. He was looking forward to pursuing art, but he didn't like being so different from all the other students, something that many were more than happy to point out on the first day. He arrived in time to see all the dogs and cats lining up to walk up the stone steps and enter the school. He took his place beside a Persian cat who immediately hissed at him. And as the large double oak doors opened, Mrs. Corbin blew her whistle, and he and all the other students walked to the auditorium, where each day for the students begins. The doors to the school closed behind them with a large thump that reverberated throughout the hall, making escape impossible for most. The students were murmuring louder than normal, pointing their paws at Fuzzy. He could feel their eyes peering at him behind his back. Could it be true, said a small tabby, I thought foxes were wild and couldn't paint, murmured a long-haired dash hound. I'm telling you, he may be a fox, but his art truly was incredible, said Stella. I think he is cute. I knew he was talented from the moment I saw him, said Yumiko, a Shiba Inu. Doesn't seem possible, grumbled an exotic short-haired cat who was as grumpy as he looked. Okay, students, time to be quiet and listen to everything I say, said Mrs. Corbin, speaking so loud that everyone could hear her, despite the mic having not yet been turned on. Good morning and welcome. It is Tuesday and a new day, and you can smell the freshness of the week and the enthusiasm for learning throughout the auditorium. Mr. McIsaac, if you please, it would seem Elsa has made a mess in the corner again. Speaking more intently, she said, Need I remind the Labradors where the bathrooms are? Repeated accidents will mean wearing the cone of shame for the rest of the school week. Now that we have that mess out of the way, I have a couple of announcements. First... The kitchen tells me that today's lunch will be stinky tofu burgers with broth and greens. The murmurs in the auditorium grew a bit louder. Next, today is the last day that submissions for the painting competition can be accepted. 
this is the most important competition in the school year. And I need not remind you just how important this competition is to the school and myself personally. And to you students, of course. Birchwood took the trophy last year, and I hope to see it in its rightful place inside my office for all to see. Mrs. Carpo tells me that our newest addition to our Stratford family, Fuzzy, has produced a work of art that she feels will most certainly give us an advantage over the competition. Fuzzy didn't really like the spotlight, and now that all eyes in the auditorium were on him, he tried to shrink to as small a size as he could. Now, off to class with you all, and remember to cheer on Fuzzy and the rest of Mrs. Carpo's team at the art gallery after school. As Fuzzy was walking out of the auditorium towards his first class, Stella walked up to him and said, I, uh, really admired the painting that you produced yesterday after school. It was, uh, very beautiful. Thank you, you are very kind, Fuzzy replied. Anyway, see you in Mr. Butler's class later, Stella said with a sense of relief. She was not sure at all how he would react, but as she found out, he was just like every other shy artist she knew. Walking down the corridor towards Manners' class with Miss Abby, Yumiko walked with him and said, I think we are in the same class together. It's an easy class, but she is a stickler for all the things that most people don't care about. I'm Yumiko, by the way. Hi, I'm Fuzzy. Everyone knows your name now, silly. You are the topic of conversation amongst all the packs here. Right. I guess Mrs. Corbin just did announce my name in front of the whole school, Fuzzy said with a chuckle as they walked through the door of class. Okay, class, you can all remain standing. Today we are going to be working on trotting, and we will work on this by using the whole space of the room, Mrs. Abby said. Now, Fuzzy, if you have any problems with this, please let me know. This is going to be silly, Fuzzy thought. How is how you walk important? But he, like the rest of the class, practiced the movement, and Fuzzy earned more than one surprised look from Ms. Abby. In Mr. Butter's class, he sat in his assigned seat, but found Stella and a Pomeranium sitting beside him. Hi, Fuzzy. This is Cotton. She isn't a painter like us, but likes to write poetry. Hi, Fuzzy. I'm looking forward to seeing your painting later today. Mmm, thank you. It's nice to meet you, Cotton. Fuzzy was a little surprised at how many people were warming up to him so quickly. There were still plenty of hisses from cats and some almost threatening looks from some of the larger dogs. But already the school started to take on a more positive look in his eyes. Maybe, just maybe this might work out, he thought. After all the classes were done, Fuzzy, along with a large portion of the student body, made their way through the maze of corridors to the gallery to see the paintings on display and to watch the judging. He walked through the huge doors and into the large gallery space with the worn wooden floors and high ceilings. In the distance, he could see Mrs. Carpo, Miss Corbin, and a group of students including Stella, Yumiko, and Cotton, standing around what looked like his painting. Except his painting looked different. Very different. As Fuzzy walked closer, his heart sank. 
someone had painted a giant X across his painting in black paint. It looked ruined. Buzzy's head hung low as Mrs. Carpo walked over to talk to him. I'm very sorry, Fuzzy. I, I, I just don't know why anyone would do such a thing. Your painting is recoverable. It's just watercolor, it seems. But it will take a great deal of time. And I'm afraid it won't be ready for judging, as the judges have already arrived. That's okay, Mrs. Carpo, Fuzzy said as he walked over to the side of the gallery to sit alone on a bench. He knew some just wouldn't accept him in this school. He was just too different. Fuzzy looked across the room and saw Ms. Corbin yelling at the judges. Wow, he thought. I certainly wouldn't want her angry at me. He continued to watch the commotion as Ms. Corbin was joined by Mrs. Carpo and the whole art class to talk to the judges. There was lots of paw waving, and both cats' and dogs' hairs on their back were standing up straight. After about 15 minutes of heated discussion, it seemed to be over, and Mrs. Carpo walked over to talk to Fuzzy. Fuzzy, Ms. Corbin couldn't convince the judges to delay the competition because we have other entries, and, well... They are sticklers for the rules. But we did convince them to let you submit another painting, as long as you can do so before the competition closes in one hour. That's not enough time for me to go home and come back, Mrs. Carpo. I know, but you could do now what you did yesterday. Paint something on the spot. Fuzzy stood silent for a minute. What he really felt like doing was simply going home and not coming back. But another voice in his head told him to try. Show everyone that being different is an asset. Show them just how wonderful his art could be. Okay, Mrs. Carpo, I'll try my best. Good, I'll get everything ready for you. As he walked again towards the middle of the room, no cat hissed at him. The Labradors gave him their undivided attention, and even a German shepherd gave him a friendly nod. Buzzy was nervous beyond belief. So nervous, his paws were shaking. Do you have everything you need? Mrs. Carpo asked. It's fine. Thank you, Mrs. Carpo. Fuzzy closed his eyes and remembered the advice of his father. But it was harder this time. He could feel the eyes of the judges, the students, Mrs. Carpo and Ms. Corbin. What if he failed and in front of all these people... Better to fail trying, his father would tell him, than to not try at all. So Fuzzy took some big breaths, got focused, and started painting. Again, everyone watched with amazement as his paws worked amazingly fast. The brush was a blur against the canvas, and again, In an incredibly short period of time, his art took form. After 30 minutes, he was finished. That's it, he said to Mrs. Carpo. But she was silent. With a single tear dripping down from her eye, she said, It's beautiful, Fuzzy. Truly beautiful. The head judge walked over and exclaimed, I can't believe what I just witnessed. You truly are a gifted student. Ms. Corbin, shedding the emotion from her voice, said, So, 
Is this piece good enough for a gold? It most certainly is, the judge replied. Stratford Academy wins this year. The gallery was filled with the sounds of relief, astonishment, and joy at the win. After signing papers, photographs with the judges, then with Miss Corbin and Mrs. Carpo, Fuzzy was finished and started to walk out of the gallery alone when he heard a voice. Would you like to come with Stella Cotton and I for some celebratory ice cream? Yumiko came over to ask. Our treat? I would love to, replied Fuzzy. And that is the end of our story. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>